Hi everyone, my name is Frances and my oral presentation topic will be on self-efficacy and positive psychology. As students, it's very easy for us to say that we want to be the best at something or that we're interested in trying something new. But it's very rare that most people will be able to execute their wants and needs because of their lack of self-efficacy. In my opinion, self-efficacy is the key to executing all wants and desires that someone dreams for. So for today's oral presentation, we will be describing what self-efficacy is according to our textbook. We will examine the tactics used to develop high levels of self-efficacy, and we will also discuss the research found to prove why having self-efficacy is the key in accomplishing one's goals and desires. So, what is self-efficacy? Well, Laura Ricci describes self-efficacy as being a personal belief in our capabilities to do a certain task. So setting goals is very important, but executing the goal is a completely different thing. Self-efficacy is like a superpower, and just like heroes, we have to develop the appropriate skills to control our power. Mami Ma had a similar approach where she stated that self-efficacy is the essential belief in our abilities to succeed in specific endeavors in our lives. So we have to believe that we're able to recognize the things that we want and the things that we have already accomplished, and that the strength of our mind can be very unlimited if we really try. So let's move on and let's talk about how to appropriately execute self-efficacy. There are many ways that we can develop high levels of self-efficacy, but these are just a few simple tips. First, to accomplish what we want, we need to first break down the steps as achievable goals. Sometimes we have a huge goal and it may seem very hard to accomplish at first. However, breaking down the goals makes it seem very less scary and much more feasible. Another tip would be that if we see others succeed, we will feel less lonely and more inspired to do the same. Doing things alone can be really scary and intimidating, which can cause a person to shy away from their goal. When we see like people with like goals striving to accomplish them, it builds their motivation to move forward as well. Another tip would be receiving encouragement. Receiving encouragement does wonders in increasing our self-efficacy. Sometimes as much as we try to push through, we fall flat because we're too tired or we feel that our route to accomplishing our goals has become very stagnant. Sharing positive words of encouragement can boost confidence and increase self-esteem so that people can become driven again to keep going. Another tip would be managing our emotions. We all have that inner voice that likes to play the devil's advocate. Sometimes our little voice can say things like, stop, this is too hard, or this isn't meant to be. Being in tune with our emotions is such an important step, in my opinion. When we feel our emotions are getting the best of us, it's very important that we continue to move forward in a positive direction. Instead of saying, this is too hard, say things like, it may be hard now, but tomorrow, with more practice, it will become much easier. These are just simple tactics that we can use to increase our levels of self-efficacy. And these tactics have actually been shown to be true. For example, there was an article written by Carla A. Castillo where she linked self-efficacy to academic success for college students with ADHD. Although positive psychology has been an up and down coming field that's been developing, its link to self-efficacy has shown high hopes in the classroom. In this article, it stated that those students who have shown poor academic skills have lower levels of self-efficacy. These students do not feel motivated, they do not feel encouraged, and they feel that they cannot reach academic success like normal kids without ADHD can. The teachers at the university took note and took action. They started to practice goal building, working in groups, and encouraging each other at any possible moment. When one student felt low, the other would immediately encourage them and say, hey, you've got this. Months went by and these same ADHD students that were struggling academically showed significant grade improvement by the end of the semester. Another article by Barley talked about how incorporating self-efficacy into everyday work curriculum would inspire workers to produce better. Barling explained that most of the employees he interviewed were very unmotivated when they came to work due to uncomfortable circumstances that had led to production to suffer. Barling offered a solution to have self-efficacy and the ideals of positive psychology and force to improve work production. Instead of workers working alone on projects, Barling suggested for projects to be done in groups. This decreased the workload for every individual in the company and encouraged everyone to have their ideas flow to improve their projects. 
And with less stress at work and more friendly conversation, this increased production in the company by a significant amount. So today we discussed what self-efficacy is, tactics to develop high levels of self-efficacy, and proven research found as to why self-efficacy is the key in accomplishing goals. Whether we believe we can accomplish our goals or we believe that we cannot, both remains true. But it's up to us in that moment to prove what will be that proven fact. Thank you.